what's your outlook on the next couple years then? Because I've heard such mixed opinions around where things are headed and a lot of people kind of like preparing their company for what may come. Like, how are you all thinking about the next couple of years and maybe what are you doing, if anything, to prepare? Two things. One, we made a commitment that in terms of the capital that we raised, it would be the last penny we will ever raise. So that's how we're operating the business. That's number one. Number two, just continue to drive credibility with investors and not overreach in your guidance. And I think so long as you do that, you're going to be fine. In terms of a macro outlook, growth just for growth's sake that's not profitable makes no sense. And so what we did when we saw the market turn is we brought forward our commitment in our plan by one year to become profitable. When we went public, we told institutions that we would not be profitable till 2024. And when we saw that market turn, Stephanie, we were like, okay, all right, it's a, it's a new, it's a new day. And so on our last call, we, we said we would uh, be adjusted EBITDA profitable in Q4 this year. Or the adjustments yeah. you made to become profitable. Cause I'm sure people listening are like, yeah, Brian, I want to become profitable within a year too. Like what did you do behind the scenes to accelerate that? You know, you start saying no to some growth opportunities that are just there to growth that don't have the margin profile that you need. You back off your longer term investments with regard to marketing. You don't build SG&A ahead of revenue. If you think you've got a year of runway, you better plan for three years. I'm not seeing it's going to take three years to turn around. But it's all about runway. The folks that aren't going to accept that or the folks that don't accept the new valuations of their businesses, okay, or may not be around a year from now. And I see people out there trying to raise money right now who have to raise money that refuse to accept the new valuations. They just aren't willing to accept the possibility that their business may not be here a year from now. You need to really start thinking of along those lines in those terms. A lot of people said inflation was transitory. Well, now listen to those same people at the talk today. Right now, just keep your head down and grind. And that's what we're doing. I guess I'd summarize it by saying, look at the current state and deal with it. I was operating in 2008, 2009, when the banks just shut down lending. That was very informative for me. Right now, you're seeing company valuations get slashed. You've got to accept that current reality. Those who survive this are going to become bigger and better companies. You know, the companies that were started in 08, 09 in the tech side are the ones that are some of the best technology companies today because those disciplines were put in place early on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I had a, there's this investor I follow where he was saying, that either if it's the person who is advising you or helping you like run your business or investing your money, you wanna make sure that they were investing money in like the 70s, like 74, 75, like if they didn't go through that, then they don't know how to invest in the correct time period, which could be to come. And same thing with like running businesses. If you weren't around in the 70s or 2008 and like were able to kind of see what it took to get through that, He's like, you should be cautious of people who have only been investing for the past 10 years or building a business for the past 10 years, because it's not really a good representation of maybe the environment that we could enter into and how to get through it. That's right. I think about the institutions that invested in us. I think about the families that depend on the company when I'm making decisions. And I think sometimes these inexperienced high growth entrepreneurs are thinking about that and they're not really thinking about the true downside scenario. When it comes to like the food industry, I mean, from the outside looking at it, it looks like your guys' margins are great, like compared to what I've seen other food industries having. But you tell me, like, what do you think is a good average margin to have for a company? I think I saw yours was maybe like 18%-ish or yeah. so. Our long-term goal is to be at 35% gross margins. And the path for us to get there is through the opening of this new facility outside of Chicago and Bolingbrook, highly automated facility, state of the art. It really allows us to manufacture at the scale of the multi-billion dollar multinational strategics. And so with that uh, level of automation, we'll be able to get our margins to where they need to be. We're guiding to the low 20, 20% 20 range which gets us to profitability, but 32, 35 is where we want to be in the long run. That would put us in the world-class range for uh, frozen food manufacturers. Yeah, that's great. So what's it looking like opening up 
this facility? I mean, are you in the weeds with it where you're like part of the day to day? Or are you kind of watching from afar? It is game on myself and our CEO, Jerry Law. We're living in the plants. I spend most of my time in our city of industry facility, which is in Southern California. Jerry's in Bolingbrook today, and he's been living there. And that's what it takes. You know, a lot of times you get, you create these ivory towers where leadership is so disconnected from what's really happening, especially in a manufacturing business. It really takes being on the floor and working with the teams directly and, and also having the experience of having done it before, I think is the other key. Yeah. Yeah. I think I saw on your Instagram, you were all suited up in the plan. Yeah. Like, oh, he's in it. He's on oh, the yeah. ground floor. No, it's funny. It's funny. So, uh, I, <laughs> I come home smelling like uh, fried chicken, my backpack, everything has to be kept outside the house. I literally change my clothes in the laundry room. Okay. As I enter the house, because I come home smelling like the plan. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. This segment was made possible by our friends at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you're looking for the number one platform for all your commerce needs, go check out salesforce.com slash commerce. And don't forget to subscribe below and tap that little bell icon so you can stay on top of all the amazing new segments and full episodes that we'll be putting out over the coming year with some of the best and most influential commerce leaders out there.